Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here. Thank you for joining us for another one of these Monday market updates, getting you ready for the week, uh, coming to you at 9 a.m. every Monday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern. And, and you know, a great topic for you today because even as Wall Street lowers its expectations on, on corporate earnings and the stock market in general, uh, analysts are now finding some great deals in very specific stocks. In fact, there are six stocks in the S&P 500 where analyst price targets are more than 100% above where they are right now. So double your money in these six stocks, according to analysts over the next year. And one, 165% price return to that average analyst target uh, over the next year. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to detail those top 10 stocks, as well as the ones they, they, they think you should avoid. The sectors that analysts see 40% upside on the the entire sector of stocks over the next year uh, and how to use this into your portfolio you know how to read some of these analyst expectations to where you should really um, where you should really be putting your money Stick around after that though, because we're going to be doing our stock, our weekly stock market update. Uh, all the stocks I'm watching this week, the stocks that could highlight the week, the economic news and data that you need to see, as well as just the trends and the strategies coming out in the stock this stock market this week. So, so make sure you check that out. Before that though, as the stock market falls and the investors just get less interested in stocks, the investing apps are doing everything they can to to bring you to their platform. I have never seen a deal like this. Webull right now is offering up to six free stocks just for opening an account and depositing any amount of money. So what this is, is a Webull is a, a stock trading app. I use the app. Uh, I love the analysis and the research on it and the, the simulator, the stock simulator that lets you trade paper money, uh, lets you trade up to a million dollars paper money trade out your strategies, your stocks before you commit any real money to them. But even if you don't want to use this, the app, folks, even if you don't want to use Webull, look at this free offer, uh, six free stocks. You open an account with Webull using the link I'll leave below in the description. You're going to get two free stocks immediately worth up to $300. Then if you deposit any amount of money, it used to be $100 you had to deposit. Now it's any amount. You can deposit one cent into your account to start trading. And you're going to get four more free stocks valued up to $3,000 each. So, so you know, up to $12,000. Generally, it, it tends to be right around $5 to $10 per stock. But even still, you know, $5, $10, you're going to get $50, $60 of free stock right off the bat just for depositing any money. So look for the link I'll leave in the description below. Click through that. Check out the platform. Check out the stock simulator, the analysis. Even if you don't like it and don't want to use the platform, you're still going to get those free stocks and it's a way to help support the channel. So I do appreciate that. Now I want to get started on those stocks to buy the ones with the most upside potential according to Wall Street analysts. And what we are, what we're looking at here, this is the FactSet Earnings Insight. It's a great research tool, totally free. You just go to Google, type in FactSet Earnings Insight. They update this every Friday. Uh, really covers the earnings growth, earnings guidance, and uh, and, and all the things about the for the stocks in the S&P 500. So some great information. I use it for research all the time. And again, it's totally free. So just uh, just look for that. But I want to scroll down here to see uh, the target price for these uh, stocks. And I want to start off with a bigger picture here. This is the sector level bottom up target price versus, versus closing price. And now understand what we're looking at here is Wall Street analysts, they put in their price targets for stocks in the S&P 500, right? And, uh, and so facts that they take this information, they add all these up and to look at, okay, so where is the target price for all these stocks? Where is the current price and how much upside return potential do we have in these? And here, what we're looking at is all the stocks in each of the 11 sectors uh, and how much upside potential is in the stocks in that sector on average versus where the current prices are. So it's a great way to look at that that bigger picture here. Where do the sectors that analysts see, uh, you know, the biggest upside potential over the next year? Here on the left here, starting on the left here, we have communication services, which is going to be all your internet names, your social media names, things like that. Analysts see those stocks up 42.6% on average over the next year, uh, the, the top performing sector in the economy. Next to that is consumer discretionary. So again, all your retailers, your consumer gadgets, your electronics, things like that, things that you don't necessarily need to buy, but we buy them anyway because they're so much fun. Next to that is technology. 36.5% a return expected on average on the stocks in the information technology sector over the next 12 months. And we can actually, if you ever want to look and see what stocks are in each sector. So what stocks are in any of these sectors that, that analysts see 
higher over the next year. You can go here to Sector Spider. This is another tool that we always use on these because it is such a, a great tool to get that big picture idea. Go to sectorspider.com, tools here, sector tracker, and then it's gonna show you each of these sectors, what the performance they did over those time periods. And then you can click through here and see the stocks in the S&P 500 in those. So if we're looking back here at this, uh, at the expectation for the communication services sector to do 42.6% return on average over the next year, we want to know what's in that sector. What are the stocks that could be, uh, you know, setting those setting those records higher? Uh, so we're going here, type on, click on communication services, and you can see all the uh, all the names in there. And again, it's going to be a lot of your social media companies, a lot of your internet companies, your streaming companies. It's going to be those old those old school. Uh, those old school telecom companies like AT&T. So you've got here Match Group, you've got Dish Network, you've got Alphabet, which is Google, you got Netflix, AT&T, Telecom, T-Mobile Telecom, uh, Take Two is gaming. You know, you've got uh, some of the some of the streaming and cable companies like Paramount and Charter. Uh, and then you've got social media companies like Twitter. Uh, you got Meta, which is Facebook, and then Walt Disney. So basically what an analyst are saying here is their upside targets for these stocks in that sector are on average 42% higher than where those stocks are at now. Uh, you've got communication discover or consumer discre discretionary, 40%, information technology, 36%, even financials. Financials is kind of surprising here. Uh, financials analysts see that 33% higher over the next year. Now, if you come over to the uh, to the right side, where the sectors that analysts are expecting to underperform, even those though are expected to post some pretty solid gains with targets in in consumer staples here at 14.8 percent higher, utilities 16 percent higher, and healthcare 18.9 percent higher. So, even the sectors that analysts think will lag the rest of the market uh, are, are supposed to be some pretty good returns over the next year, according to analyst targets. And we're going to talk about how to use that, uh, you know, where you see the, where I see the problems in these targets and what to do with that. But first, I want to scroll down here and uh, what you came for, the difference, uh, the, the top 10 stocks that analysts see the most, the highest upside return. So stocks to buy over the next year, according to analysts on Wall Street. And here you got a lot of the names that are the, really the hardest hit over the last year, right? Those are going to play heavily into these top 10 ranked by analysts because, well, those analyst targets are probably still, uh, you know, still a little bit higher than where those stocks are right now. So you've got uh, within this group of top 10, and you can see the names here, you've got uh, a lot of the 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 Car Caribbean, uh, Royal Car Caribbean Carnival, so the cruise lines. Uh, Royal Caribbean expected to be up 101% over the next year. Uh, Carnival Cruise Lines up 108% to those one-year targets. So both of those up double from where they are now. You've got uh, the gambling stocks seem to do, to do really well. MGM Resorts expected to be up 95% over the next year. Caesars Entertainment topping the list here. Caesars Entertainment with 165% expected return to that average analyst target. We've also got 106, 107% return expected on Penn National Gaming. So uh, analysts expecting the uh, the consumers to come out, start gambling again like they used to, going to going to Vegas as well as that online gambling, and really boosting these stocks higher. Uh, rounding out that top ten, you've got uh, Dish Network, 136 percent, Bath and Body Works, 115 percent upside return. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, so streaming streaming and, and media stocks there, 98% higher. Expedia Group, 96% higher. And then Alaska Air Group, um, the airlines there up 88% to its target. But now it's important to understand, you know, how we get to these numbers, that return potential, and uh, and whether they, they really could get there or not. You know, these analyst targets, these are all based on those analyst target price or the average analyst target price for these stocks, as well as for all the stocks in the S&P 500 for those sectors, where we looked at the, sever the sector return uh, just, just before. Now, of course, some of these, they have fallen so far so fast that maybe analysts haven't updated their price targets. Okay, so those price targets could be old. Uh, they could start coming down, especially as we get into the second quarter earnings earnings season. Companies are going to be guiding their earnings expectations a little bit lower, I think. Analysts are going to take that. They're probably going to lower their own expectations for earnings over the rest of the year as well as into the next year. And some of these average price targets for these stocks and the sectors are going to come down a little bit, right? So it's not necessarily that the analysts really see maybe 100 or 165% upside uh, on a lot of these stocks. They maybe just haven't updated their targets quite, quite to where they need to be.
So if you look at here, where the analysts thought the communication services, stocks in the consumer discretionary and technology would be the best three performing sectors with those returns of 42, 40 and 36 percent over the next year. If we do get a recession and stocks, uh, the economy weakens and stocks continue to come down, it might in fact be these last three se sectors that healthcare, utilities and consumer staples that actually provide the best returns. OK, what we're basing this information on here, what analysts are saying and basing their information on when they make these targets and these upside return potential is they're basing that on a uh, you know a rebound in the market it, that that this is already the bottom of the market that we will see a bull market here over the next year and that these hardest hit sectors the communication services your infotech names your consumer discretionary names are going to rebound faster uh, but what i'm saying is i do expect a recession next year i do expect the economy to start weakening so i think your better bet here is probably in some of these more safety bets right healthcare utilities consumer staples even the real estate sector here which is only expected to do about 25% over the next year. I think those four sectors really help protect your money against a sell-off in some of these more cyclical, uh, cyclically sensitive stocks. Now, even if you do expect a recession and further stock market weakness like like I do, I think you can still use these individual stocks as kind of guidance. You know, if uh, if analysts still see these average target prices for these individual stocks so high, you know, it is a vote of confidence for these companies. It is a vote of confidence that these companies, they have good business models, they have good strong balance sheets, as well as other fundamentals, and they're willing to have those higher average target prices. So even if those tar target prices do come down, uh, and even if we do get a recession and you don't quite see 100% return on some of these stocks over the next year, I think that vote of confidence from the analyst community, you know, through their research, um, yeah, analysts aren't always right. In fact, they're a lot of times they're wrong, but they do they do the hard research, the detailed and deep research into these companies. And if they're expecting you know 100% return, I think a lot of these companies, at least at least over the long term, are at least good for uh, very good very good returns on your money. Now I want to switch it over to our weekly stock market update. I want to start here with the sectors to get that big picture idea of, of what the stocks did uh, stocks in the S and P 500 did last week. How to use that to decide? Okay, what am I going to buy? How am I going to invest this week and over the next few months? Uh, over the last week, 10 of the 11 stock sectors did close higher. Had a huge week last week, uh, breaking that three-week losing streak in the indexes. Uh, and kind of in a twist of fate here, it is now the energy sector that is the lone laggard of the market after posting really the rest of the year the, as the only sector higher. Before last week, the uh, before the last couple of weeks actually, the energy sector was up something like 50, 60 percent for the year. Many of those weeks, it was the only sector that was posting positive gains as the rest of the market was falling. Now the gains on the most of the remaining sectors were so high that it really might be instructive here for the last week to look at what really didn't rally. Okay, you know, excluding financials, industrials, and materials, the remaining sectors all posted returns of 5.76% or, or more, right? So it was really those three lagging sectors, financials, industrials, and materials. You see here, financials only did 4.5% last week. Uh, industrials and materials really lagged 3.8% for industrials and only 2% higher for materials. So well, well underperforming the market last week for the materials sector. And I think it's really, really speaks to, uh, you know, the market's uh, fear and positioning for a recession. Okay, these three lagging sectors are the most economically sensitive, rising and falling along with those expectations for economic growth uh, and, and really that ongoing fear of a recession. So whereas, you know, investors bought back into a lot of these stocks in these other sectors, uh, consumer discretionary did 8% last week, uh, tech stocks did 7% last week, really a bounce back in a lot of these stocks. I think you still see a lot of fear of of a recession coming in the markets and investors are still really positioning ahead of that. So I would be watching uh, not only those economically sensitive sectors like industrials, materials and financials, but really for the rest of the market to remain weak on those fears of a recession. It's going to be a quiet week for economic data this week. The market is closed in the following Monday for Independence Day. So this week likely to be very low volume, uh, just like we saw last week. And that just means typically then uh, any move to the upside or downside is going to be amplified, right? Because you don't have very many traders, very many institutional investors uh, doing things over the week. So you could have uh, amplified trading moves. Now, what we do see this week is that the market wraps up its second quarter and really the first half of the year. And now that's important because 
because a lot of institutional managers, a lot of portfolio managers need to be portf need to rebalancing their portfolios. So why that's important is because so a portfolio, they have their, their portfolio of stocks that they manage and they usually have a mandate for what percentage they have to have in stocks and what percentage they have to have in bonds, right? Well, when you see uh, stocks drop so much like they have in the, uh, in the first half of the year, so stocks just had their worst for first half since Nixon was president, right? So more than 50 years, um, you know, 50 years of stock market data, uh, the fir worst first half, uh, you know, over that period. So that portfolio allocation that those portfolio managers have, those institutional managers have, is now way down for stocks. You know, they might have started the year off with 55% or 60% of their money in stocks. And now, because stocks have fallen so much, that allocation is only at maybe 40 or 45%. Well, what they need to do now is rebalance. They need to sell some bonds or sell some other assets to reposition money back into stocks. That could help boost stocks over this week. As, uh, as those portfolio managers buy more stocks and, and boost those portfolio allocations. So it's just a, uh, you know, a good sign for momentum this week. We could keep, uh, keep that momentum going that we saw last week. The risk, though, here is that this is just another one of those bear market rallies, right? We covered this in a video a few weeks ago, those bear market rallies those 10 to 15% jumps in stocks, uh, you know, that, that just evaporate and then the stock market hits those lower lows because nothing really fundamental has changed in the market, right? With a lot of these, you'll see things like uh, you'll, you'll get into oversold te te territory with stocks. So the S&P 500 or some of these indexes will fall so fast that those technical indicators like the relative strength index, the RSI, will hit into oversold territory. And that's just a signal. That's just a, a sign for a lot of investors, for especially for the institutional investors, that stocks are oversold on that short-term basis. And then they'll start buying stocks, right? Because stocks are oversold or cheap on that technical basis. So what that does, that, that really builds a floor into the stock prices. It gets stocks going up maybe 5 or 6%. Uh, on that 5 or 6%, other investors start to see that and they think, well, hey, if this is the next bull market, I want in. I want my piece. So they'll put their money in there and that's going to boost stock prices up further and further. And what we see is you know, stocks rallying maybe 10 or 15% on top of this, just this cascading events uh, pushing stocks higher. The problem is it is all based on just those short-term technical ideas, is based on momentum and sentiment, and not really based on anything fundamental with the market, right? All the fundamental factors that are pushing stocks down, like high, high inflation rate, higher interest rates from the Fed, uh, you know, supply chain issues, all of these factors, these longer term, bigger picture factors are still weighing on stocks. So what happens invariably and what we've seen over the at least three times this year already uh, is that, you know, we'll get some kind of piece of economic data like a, an inflation report or the Fed will come out and raise interest rates. Something something will come back to say, hey, you know, we're still in that bear market. Uh, it'll push stocks back, back down again and uh, and really hit those lower lows. So very dangerous in these bear market rallies that investors push all their remaining money back into stocks thinking it's a new bull market, but then get trapped into that as stock prices continue to fall further. Again, we did talk about that in a video over the last, uh, you know, over the last few months. Uh, really important to check out that video and see really how to trade into that because it is an opportunity to maybe take advantage of that bear market rally as stocks rally 10, 15 percent. Take some of your money off the table at those higher prices because stocks tend to do tend to fall further after that. Um, we're also quickly approaching second quarter earnings earning seasons. The banks, the major banks, are going to start us off on July 14th with those earnings season, and then that'll run through uh, through August really. And what we're expecting this week is for a lot of companies to pre-warn on their announcements, right? You'll see this typically, especially coming into bad quarters, into qu quarters where a lot of companies might be at risk of missing their earnings expectations. They will warn that those, uh, those expectations are too high and the earnings are going to be a disapp disappointment. So we are expecting that. That could be a negative for stocks this week, even against that rebalancing by portfolio managers. Uh, the one piece of economic data that I am watching this week is the S&P uh, case 
Case Shiller Home Price Index, right? That comes out each month, reports the, the average selling price of homes uh, through the month and is likely to show just continued weakness in the housing market, right? Uh, we're not expecting home prices to fall on a year over year basis. There will still be growth in home prices, uh, but that growth is gonna start to slow, okay? We've already seen mortgage applications drop off a cliff. We'd all, we've all already seen uh, you know pending home sales as well as construction slow down. Uh, so the housing market is uh, undeniably slowing down and we probably will see some indication of that in these numbers this week on, uh, on home prices. Now I wanna highlight some of the stocks I'm watching this week, some of the stocks reporting earnings and the stocks that you need to watch. Uh, Aerovironment, uh, ticker AVAV, reports its earnings on Tuesday with expectations to for just 39 cents a share. That would be against a dollar four cents a share reported last year. So expecting to report a big drop in earnings for Aerovironment. Uh, there is the potential though for a surprise here. I think they could do well, especially if the company reports an increase in contracts for unmanned drone vehicles by the U.S. really to, to send to Ukraine, right? This is something we've seen over the last couple of months. The U.S. is using more U uh, more drones to send to the Ukraine to help them, help them out in that conflict. Management recently reported a, a new $6.2 million contract with the Marine Corps for its Puma 3 drone system. So uh, so yeah, I think, I think Aero Environment could surprise on the upside on those drone purchases. General Mills, ticker GIS, is gonna report its earnings on Wednesday. Uh, sure to get questions on that plan by Kellogg to break up its, its company into three separate companies. Uh, I'm not expecting General Mills to, to make any big announcements that it's gonna be spinning off or breaking up, but uh, definitely is gonna get questions on that and, and how that affects its business. Uh, shares of GIS and others of, the, of those packaged food industries were already outperforming the market uh, and really as those safety plays all year and have rallied on that news, right? That these these companies are looking for strategic alternatives, considering spinning off or, or breaking up their companies. Uh, earnings are expected higher by 1% on the year and 4% growth in sales. So really doesn't seem like a high bar, okay? Uh, again, analysts are only expecting earnings up about a percent this year, 4% uh, growth in sales. It's not a high bar, and, and I wouldn't expect management to be lowering its guidance. I actually think management could could reaffirm its guidance, and uh, it's probably going to be a positive for this stock. So General Mills probably going to continue to be a stock that's going to protect your money against the rest of the uh, the market backdrop. Bed Bath and Beyond ticker BBBY. It's going to report its earnings on Wednesday after the stock has plunged 74% since March. Uh, since that March announcement that activist investor Ryan Cohen is was really pushing the company to spin off its assets. Now, the most recent earnings call saw management report comp sales, so comparable sales for the company falling 20% on a quarter by quarter basis. So now while it's, you know, it's unlikely that the business has really changed that much over this, this last three months, it's, it's kind of hard to believe it could get any worse, right? Um, they do have a cooperation agreement with Cohen. Under that, the, the company is going to add three new board members with finance and strategy experience, as well as creating a four-member committee to explore other alternatives to unlock shareholder value. So, you know, there is upside potential here that one, just, it, just things just haven't gotten any worse, right? It's hard to imagine how management could bungle this any more than they have over the last year. Uh, but also, too, that they do announce some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of alternative, some kind of strategic alternative where they're going to unlock some of that shareholder value. So I would be watching Bed Bath and Beyond again on Wednesday. Also here, Constellation Brands ticker STZ reporting its earnings on Thursday. A very good year for beer and liquor companies, especially beer. Uh, beer producers have seen very strong sales this year. Companies expected to post 9.6% earnings growth this year on just 6.4% sales growth, and that's really weird. That's that's markedly different from the rest of the market that we've seen, that, where they've been showing pretty good sales growth. Right, they, most companies uh, have been reporting sales growth that has been strong, but then lower earnings growth because of all those. Uh, those inflation pressures, right? The pricing power. I think it really shows the pricing power that the company has in that premium beers and beverages segment, you know, really allowing them to raise prices to cover their own inflation while also cutting, cutting their operating costs. Okay, that's the only way you get 6.4% uh, sales growth into 9.6% earnings growth. Okay, you have to leverage up that sales growth uh, by, by really cutting your operating costs and using some of that, using some of that leverage. Constellation reports a best-in-class operating margin of 34%, right? So 
So the, uh, the company is undeniably uh, one of the best, one of the most profitable in their industry, uh, but it does lag some of its competitors, uh, Molson Coors, Diageo, and Brown Foreman uh, in that sales growth. So sales growth, pretty slow for Constellation Brands. Uh, shares are down just 3% this year so far, though. So another one of these companies that is, uh, is protecting investors' money from that stock market sell-off. Look for that link below to Weeble to get your six free stocks worth up to $12,000 or click on the video to the right for that video on the bear market rallies, how to use these, why these are so dangerous, and how to turn it to your advantage. Don't forget to join the community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.